Good evening, wonderful people, great beer friends, wherever you are. We welcome you to another explosive edition of Radio Biafra presentation this very evening of the 31st day of May in the year of our Most High Elohim 2020. The time now is exactly a minute past the top of the hour. That, many, that means it is a minute past 7 p.m. in the glorious land of Biafra and the same number of minutes wherever you are, regardless of the time zone you are listening to us from. We are coming to you live. We are direct. This is a live presentation. I know that a lot of people, we are shocked that I am once again on air presenting this very evening, but we have a gospel to preach, and we have decided that that very gospel we must preach on this very day. I will encourage you to ask your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, your parents, your siblings, your cousins, and your uncles to gather around their listening devices, wherever they are, to partake and to participate in this very offering this evening. Because we are not like any other broadcaster. We are not like any other that you may have come across. We exist in over 80 countries around the world and in all those places across the length and breadth of this very planet Earth. People are listening to Radio Biafra. Some of you may have joined us via my Facebook page, Mazen Nam the Canal, of course, the official one, not the fake one, created by DSS to deflect and to divert attention away from this very monumental work that we are doing to restore our nation. We are on Radio Biafra app. You can receive us via tuning app. We are on Simple Radio. We are on Garden Radio, if I'm not mistaken, I say Radio Garden, each of the two, or either of the two, I must say. We are also on Satellite. Radio Biafra is also on FM in Biafra land. Across all this plethora of, of platforms, you can and should be able to receive Radio Biafra if you are determined to join us. Once again, I welcome you. And I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you because we are broadcasting into every time zone around the world. Should you wish to listen to us, you should be able to do so without any hindrance whatsoever. I welcome you. My name is Namde Kano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. And by the very special grace of Chukukika Biama Prumi Yanine, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. This evening, before we go any further, we are going to pray. We are going to call upon Elohim to direct our proceedings this very evening, as we have always done and will continue to do until the end of time. Whatever we are, I do recommend and suggest that you close your eyes if you can, or that you bow your heads in prayer. And I will pray in the language of heaven. The same way in Roman Catholicism many, many years ago, they used to pray in Latin. The same way till this very day, Judaism, we pray in Hebrew. The same way, and as I am sure, if you go to Orthodox Church, they pray in Ethiopian language, if you go to the Coptic church, they pray also in Greek language. And if you're part of evangelicals, you pray in what I call American English. Here, in keeping with the tradition of the ancients, and because we are bowing before the throne of heaven, we will defer and pray in the language of heaven. 
Chukwa ki kabi ya manke prumi nye ni ne. Onye li ibgwe no wana kwisi ala nye. Onye obo nani ya. Kareri nye ni ne nkane etu ya. Chine kena nkene poranyi huma poranyi azu. Anyi wena okwa hansoyi. Wena yogi nebo bibi gibe wakata sebe ni nelu. We na sige zendi nsopi konu. We na kari nkezi yon mehi. Dye ki we le tande. Ni hinanye mehe wo we mehi dengi. Iwa ki we kari si chane banyi no. Mana ni we na poko ki. Mani me mwa mani me ziopu. Na yogi bikonu wa mani no miko ki. Ni me ndundigi ni nebo mugobo aipyo bi no wani ne. Umo ge bonde biafra. We na siye zende nso. Ki yegi we chane banyi no. Ki we akari nkezi yo umegi we. Kwa ki dende gen nanke bere de ngozi. Ni ye kare ranyi pia kute ranyi. Nandiru abate wanyi ni me. We chijye kwa naga. We memi la olu akanke kyo mwagi. We bocha po mwagi. Bundi dunye kawe weti hen sogi ni me bia fra onye mwem. Anyi we na sige zende nso biko me ranye bere. Chine ken nan kusu ni le nken diaga biko me ranye bere. Onye anyi di we ne monu biko me ranye bere. Ni hinandi anyi kamana chisi anyi ochi. Onye mwem biko nu. Ni hino bugo tuwa kisi we padoya. Obugo tuwa akisi we buru ya novi kwa sana duwanyi ne luwa. Kema obusi tena amari, obusi tena mehe. Obusi tena rorala. Obusi tena uzi honjo ni nedi chiche ajo muona ajo madu. Meleji we di kanyo wanyo na lasu na kebre di kwenye wena ajoki. Bikonu onye ndi muozi na kuisi alanya. Chine kene se bubede ngozi. Wele bi kone hona nyagi nebele ki we bia ki we. Leta anye kilu ki we chane banye no. Kamra ki we ziwe ke ni mendu anye. Kanye bundi gano ndu na lankendi dendu. We hon bi afra onye we. Kanye we feyo feno zosi resi. We kuisi alanya ki mbe ni ne. We gani ma o chuku nanke vre de ngozi. Dikosi we dina mbe bo. We mwono hulu kwe se mbe de ngozi. We feyo fufe kika mwono we ziwe kwa do. Eze bede anye ye faro si. Anye ga api si ala we nye inho blaba anok pa aho. Anye na ye fe inye wanye mo. Anye na ye fe inho blaba anok ke jaka ye we gutu si si. We pia. Ni ina nyo wanye ne fe ki. Eze bede nko si bikori ni me mwone ezio kwa ni we na ryoye. We na jake ma we ne to ki. We na si ki bikori toni nan sopo ni. E jamani ne brun ke nane ki. O ne kre li gwa no wubwa moro mbrine bebe kana ryo. Isse. 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 Mamma de Regichinaka. We have to proceed very speedily and without hesitation to preach this very gospel. Rather unorthodoxly, this very evening, we are going to start in a way that most would not actually expect us to. We want to lay the background upon which everything that is rotten about the zoo is predicated. We want to lay for the whole world to understand that when people talk about the zoo called Nigeria, that when saboteurs are rising up and defending what is in essence the indefensible, that they understand the enormity of the problem confronting the people that inhabit the damnable zoological republic. Our enemies are not sleeping. Therefore, I may choose to come air every blessed day. If it is warranted, I will do so. Our enemies are not sleeping at all. The devil is not sleeping. The Asabo is not sleeping in our land. All the traitors are not sleeping. Therefore, we shouldn't sleep either. We shouldn't be called sleeping. Our enemies are numerous. They are fighting us in every way possible. We must overwhelm and overcome them. 
That's what we're going to do this evening. You must listen very, very carefully. Very, very carefully, please. Very, very carefully. We have to preach this very gospel. This is the voice of the real sponsor of Boko Haram. All of you know him. Alim Dume. Listen, he's a politician. He is a gingerweed politician. Listen to what he has to say about the zoo. And then from there, we take it on and build and weave the entire structure of this evening program on top of what this man has to say. This very video is everywhere. I am sure some of you may have heard about it before. But not from this perspective, most definitely. I want you to listen and listen very carefully and attentively. If Facebook is frustrating you, if they kick you out, try and rejoin again. That is what they are, that's what they do all the time. That is their stock in trade. BBC was against us during the war. There was a media blackout on Biafra during the war. We have traced their conspiracy back to the House of Lords in England. Those who don't want the light to shine in Africa, they didn't start today. They've been doing this thing for nearly 320 years. It didn't start today. So what Facebook is doing is not new. What our detractors are doing is not new. The only thing is that our enemies who are within are using the name of Biafra. They are telling you that they agitate us to deceive, to misdirect your attention. They are doing all of these things in order to delay the coming of Biafra, to please their ginger weed masters in the north. We have discovered their tricks. We know what they are up to. And we are determined to stop them. And that's what we are going to do. Every blessed day that we wake up, what we are going to do is to remind them, always and without fail, that we remain as resolute, as determined, and as formidable as ever. Listen to this, please. It is very, very important. Nigerian leaders, it's very unfortunate. I'm part of it. We deceive people. We are not honest. We deceive people. We are not honest. Also, the worst part of it is that Nigerians also deceive themselves. Because if you ask for accountability in my own religion, they say God. You know, God. God. And the good thing about it is, everybody in Nigeria, you know, in Nigeria we don't have pagans. You can call us anything, but we don't have pagans. Because every Nigerian, no Nigerian, I don't know of any Nigerian that worship uh, idol. Are you listening? Uh, people only go to shrine. And that shrine, they believe God is there. Isn't it? And it's not like they have somebody that they go and worship. No. So we are religious people, and we believe in one God. Yet when people come around and start talking, they don't fear God. I, I don't think they even believe that God is there. Are you went to God's... Do you understand what he's saying? This is Alin Dume. He is telling you that all of them are bad including nigerians themselves that is exactly what he is saying they are all bad all of them bar none all of them are bad if you don't understand what he said i will try and play it again for you it's very unfortunate i'm part of it it's unfortunate we deceive people we're not honest politicians in nigeria we they do what Nigerians. They deceive people. They are telling you it is their job. Their job is to deceive you. Their job is to raise saboteurs from everywhere. It is their job always to make sure that you're held down in poverty and in penury. It is their job to make sure you have no electricity. It is their job to make sure you have no good roads. It is their job to make sure you have no decent education. It is their job to make sure you are born into suffering you will exist in pain and in suffering and you will die in pain and in suffering it is not me saying it it is a politician a Nigerian politician listen again very carefully please listen to what they have to say Nigerian leaders it's very unfortunate I'm part of it we deceive people we are not honest they deceive people we deceive Nigerians. And also, the worst part of it is that Nigerians also deceive themselves. 
Because if you ask for accountability, Nigerians also deceive themselves. When we call them a zoo, when we say there are people living in a zoo, most of them don't understand us. They don't know where we are coming from. They don't know why we say the things we do. They don't know why we agitate the way we agitate. Not only are the politicians bad, Nigerians themselves are also awful. They are the ones who are suffering. They are the ones who are at the receiving end of a primitive Janjaweed misrule, they are the ones who should be rising up to fight for their freedom. But they are the ones, over and over again, that have decided to fight those who are fighting for their freedom. And I don't want anybody to get discouraged. You cannot afford to be discouraged. We must remain resolute. That is one thing we are known for. Our determination is unquestionable. And that is what we must demonstrate at all times. At all times we must. We are unwavering in our belief that what we are doing is right because of people like this. Because of a, polit of a political system and of a political class that have decided to impoverish their own kind. This is the very essence of a black man's wickedness. If you're wondering how evil and bad a black man is, what this man is saying is a pointer. It tells you all that you need to know about them and why you have saboteurs in our land who are working for the enemy. And proudly so. They are not only working for the enemy, they are proudly working for the enemy. They are. And tomorrow they will come out to complain. But they will not tell you that they are the architect of their own problem. This is a man accused of sponsoring Boko Haram. He is a politician. He is in the zoo. That tells you all you need to know. Now, having listened to that, I want our people to understand that there are only two factors holding us down. Having regard for what this man have just said, there are only two things holding us down as a people and keeping us away from our freedom. That is what we are going to discuss this very evening. If time will permit our lines will open later on. I will try as much as I can to open our lines if, if network permits us. There are two factors holding us down and that is the reason why it's always very easy for the Janjaweed to kill, to invade, and to divide us at will. To divide us at will. They are not going to change. They will never change. They will always try to divide us. They will try to demoralize us. They will do everything they can to make you feel that what you're doing is not working. But believe you me, we are holding them in a very bad place. That I can assure you. There are two factors holding us down. And that is the reason why the Fulani Janja weed always find it easy to kill us, to invade and most importantly, critically, to divide us at will. It didn't start today. The reason why people are sometimes ashamed, or should I say, afraid to say who they are, to use the word Biafra, was because Britain, over 300 years ago, started this very process. When they themselves researched and discovered that indeed we are the children of God, in the land of Africa, there to bring light to Africa. That was when Britain started this very concerted effort, both covertly and overtly, to make sure that Biafra does not see the light of day. And this evening, I'll prove it to you. I am also trying to make you understand this, that the successive leadership of all Biafran ethnic nationalities have failed, repeatedly failed, repeatedly I say, failed to address the issue of division, 
the issue of segregation, the issue of subjugation, the issue of the subversion of the name Biafra. So that when we agitate for Biafra, the world can understand the reason why we are doing so. That our enemies as well can appreciate the reason why we are doing so. Another problem that we have is Igbo man's love for gossip and backbiting. Bitchiness. I didn't say Igbo women, I said Igbo men. Their love for gossip. And their, this, this affinity they have to backbite, which links to what I've always preached all the time. It has to do with greed, envy, and jealousy. That is why you have Janja weed in our homes, in our villages, in our communities, in our market squares, in our bushes, in our forests, everywhere you have them. Up until now, up until this very minute, those who hold political power, there has never been any concerted effort to try to drive those people away. And before the Janjaweed came, before the Fulani decided to invade Biafra land and take our land over, they bribed every major media house in the world. They bribed everybody. They bribed Facebook. They bribed BBC. They bribed CNN. They bribed Dutch. Anybody, every major news outlet in the world is in their payroll. Now that they're invading, have you heard about this invasion anywhere else? Are people complaining about this invasion? Have you heard of any publication anywhere in the world analyzing the disproportionate influx of Janjaweed and Lamajiri terrorist fighters into Biafra land? I'm asking you a question. Have you read it anywhere? The reason why you will not read it is because they have been paid. They have been bribed. There is a global effort not to allow Biafra to emerge. I said global. Conspiracy. And the evil man is not helping either. The evil man is not helping either. They are the ones who are being recruited to do the work of the Janjaweed for them. They are the ones who are going over all over the place, lying against Biafra, trying to deceive the same people that they ought to be saving. These are the issues confronting us as a people. And it is my duty and responsibility to highlight it to the hearing of the whole world that mankind may know that there was a time that we preached this very gospel. We warned our people, but they did not listen. This evening, we are continuing our effort to unite the Biafran family all over the world, especially in Biafra land. I said, especially in Biafra land, because there are some things that people do not know. There are many things we do not appreciate nor understand, nor have the urge or need to understand it. That is why when we preach, we use historical references that each and everybody listening to us may come to the understanding that what we are saying is irrefutable. You can't doubt it. You can never, ever doubt it. Now, this very evening, having heard what the Alamajiri said, that the zoo called Nigeria is a den of rogues and ro politicians are evil. Even ordinary Nigerians are evil as well. That is what the man said. That people are merely deceiving themselves. They claim they believe in God. There is nothing godly about them. All they do is to lie and to deceive themselves. And the, should I say, the headquarters of all these liars and deceivers are in Igbo land. They say Igbo men. It doesn't matter if you call yourself Niger Delta or anything you call yourself. You are your own greatest problem and enemy. 
when other people are grouping together seeking to devour you to invade your land to take your ancestral homes you are busy gossiping envying each other and backbiting because that is what the enemy asked you to go and do to divide the attention to make sure they don't focus on that very thing that we are doing, which is to come into your land, conquer you, defeat you militarily and politically, and then take over everything that belongs to you. Now listen, this is a story of somebody because this debate about Niger Delta is still raging. And I'm going to link everything up this evening. From what this Janjaweed said to everything about this whole Niger Delta nonsense, you, traitors, saboteurs are hiding under Niger, the name Niger Delta to derail Biafra. They are hiding under the name Niger Delta to perpetrate iniquity. They are hiding under the name Niger Delta to get away or to excuse themselves from a responsibility they willingly entered into. Liars and deceivers. That was why I said that anybody, man or woman, referring to himself or herself as a Niger Delta person, once you have Niger, you have Delta, in anything you are doing, God in heaven knows you are a demon. You are working for the caliphate. That is how you know them. Once they have Niger to their name, or South South, Niger Delta, Delta, anything that has Delta to it, you know they are working for the Fulani Caliphate. And their job is to distract your attention at this very critical time, is to make you not to see clearly, is to make you not to critically analyze your situation. To make it impossible for you to come together as a people to articulate a solution or should I say a way out of the mess that you're in. That is why they're in our land. And if you don't know that we are surrounded, we are. We are apart from Israel. Biafra is the second most hated people in the whole world. People hate Biafrans for no reason. They just see you and they hate you for no reason. They see the blessing of God on your face and they despise you. That is why they have come into our land to take it. And what are their agents doing? Trying to deflect your attention, trying to divert your attention away, trying to make you feel that you have greater problems, that 2023 presidential whatever nonsense election is your priority or should be your priority, that the best way to address the overwhelming invasion of your land is to hope that things will be better in 2023. And by that time, you will no longer exist. You must understand what these people are doing. Somebody wrote something which is quite interesting, which I must read to you. I think I, I don't have his name. No, I have his, his name is Chibike. Is that correct? What is his name? Let me read the, the, what he wrote anyway. He said, I come from Otaka community in Obubra. Obubra is in Cross River State. Obubra LGA, local government area of Cross River State. We are about 20,000 inhabitants in population, as the controversial census says. Of course, nobody believes anything coming out of the zoo, according to what Alim Dume said. Our, this is Cross River State, a Cross River indigenous. That is why Facebook doesn't want the truth to be told. That is why all of them are ganging up against us. Ganging up against what IPOB is doing. But we don't care. We don't give a damn. If they say it's only one person listening, I will preach. Instead of me to preach for two hours, I will preach for three hours. The more they reduce the number of our listeners, the more I will preach. You think this is 67? You can intimidate. You can use your, your, your media blackout as they are slaughtering Biafrans, as our parents are dying on the battlefield trying to defend us. You are busy lying to the whole world. All of you, we are lying to the whole world. Every Yoruba media, every Awosa media, they 
It's middle belts today who are being slaughtered. I said the same Christians in the middle belt that I'm fighting for when I go to America. The same Christians in the middle belt. You joined Go On, who was a Christian, to kill Biafrans. Go On went and created southeastern Nigeria, which is this same place where Igbo people come from, in Cross River State. I hope you're listening. In Cross River State. Now, Niawodo, Ohanese, so called leaders of Biafra, or Igbo leaders, none of them over all these years, none of them ever rose up to challenge this abomination by Gowon and the Janjaweed Fulani that have been dividing us with drawing artificial boundaries. We thought that what Luga did was bad. What go on and the Janja wood in the north did is, a, is an abomination. And that was why Chuko Kikadiyama said Biafra will not. Are you listening? Biafra can never come until you go and unite all these my children together. And that's what we are doing. Now you know why Biafra did not come in 1970. I have told you this story before. I went to America and they were giving us the facts and figures of the Biafran war. They said that, of course, the Vietnam War was a distraction. But had we fought on for another six months, President Nixon would have instructed Harold Wilson in the UK to allow Biafra to go. Only six more months. But we stopped. Because the Elohim wanted to show us Biafra, the promised land, to say, your parents have fought for this. Now all of you should go and fight for it. And that's what we are doing. But you cannot fight for Biafra unless you unite the children of the Most High. Unless all the Biafran families are one together. And that is exactly what we are doing. The only thing is that we are doing it in every truth and in every honesty. That is why we say everything in the open. Nothing is hidden. So when we tell you that this is where the boundary of Biafra starts and this is where it ends, you will have no need to doubt us. Let me read for you. There are about, according to official zoo census, there are about 20,000 inhabitants in Otaka community in Obubura local government area of Cross River State. Because when a Janjaweed Irat or a Yoruba Irat was like, oh, leave Cross River out of your Biafra, they will not tell you. This is something that channels cannot tell you. Punch newspaper can never tell you. All the Yoruba media can never tell you because they are, they are doing the work of Lucifer. They are working for Satan. They are working for darkness. They can never ever tell you that there are evil people in Cross River State. They never tell you that. They can never tell you. Not just in Delta, not just in Rivers. Because if you ask the Hanes, if you ask anyone, they will say, oh, there are the, the, the Igbo speak, the seven Igbo speaking states. Igbo speaking. But there are no Hausa speaking states in the north. No Fula speaking states in the north. No Yoruba speaking states. It's only in our land. They want to divide us. They don't want us to be together. Once you divide the land of Biafra, Elohim departs. His glory cannot be with you. His grace, he will take his grace with him. You are on your own. That's why we are suffering today. So what we are actually doing now is what Ohaneza should have done since 1976. They never did it. These are the elders that uh, they sat down and they saw something that young children cannot see. Isn't it ironic? That we have elders and children are now teaching elders their own history. Elders that should be telling us under the moonlight, in the, in the night, what our history is. Who we are related to. Who are your brothers? Who are your cousins? Who are your sisters? They didn't do it. It is us, the children, now telling our fathers who we are and who our relatives are. It is a shock and utter abomination. Utter abomination.
My goodness. Let's let me read this to you. Our language is Hebrew in Cross River, in Cross River State, in Otaka community, in Ogubra, in Cross River State. The language is Hebo language. They speak the same Hebo that some parts of Hebo people are speaking. That's all. And in Otaka village, in Ogubura local government area of Cross River State, they have four market days. And in Otaka village, in Ogubura local government area of Cross River State, they circumcise all their male children on the eighth day. They celebrate New Year Festival. They are called Isobo people. Isobo is the same thing. The same we have in Isoko. In the so-called Delta State. I hope you're following. Not that we want to force anybody to be part of Biafra. But we want to let the God Almighty in heaven know that that assignment that he gave to us, that we must go and locate all his children, shine this light of knowledge of Biafra to them, then let them decide where they wish to belong. They must decide where they wish to belong. That is exactly what we are doing. Some people will listen, they will keep calling. Even when it's not time to do so. That is what Alin Duma was saying. People who don't listen to very simple instructions. But we must proceed. And proceed, we must. Don't please, but if they remove you, you come back in again. That is what Facebook does. It doesn't matter what they do. We are proceeding. We are proceeding with our program this evening. I said, I, I challenge Facebook to take it down from now 5.9k. Take it down to 100. And I'll still be preaching. You, you, we are beyond being demoralized. If you don't know. Otaka community in Obubura government area of Cross River State is Biafra. It is an Igbo territory. They call them the great sub Igbo speaking groups. Domiciled in Niger Delta, that's what they call them. These are Igbo people. They are calling them Niger Delta. And it's even a very good thing that even the pig today came out to say he's an Igbo man. And I, and I said, no wonder. Only an Igbo man can be as stupid as you are. Only an Igbo man can collect money and deny that he didn't collect any. I'm coming to you later on. Only an Igbo man will now deny that you don't know who Chen Nasiebu is. You are now denying that Chen Nasiebu never gave you any money. Only an Igbo man will do that and say he's a Niger Delta. Talking rubbish. Only an Igbo man will deny money given to him. Only she a criminal. By day and by night. You deny I never spoke to you. You deny I never sent people to your to your to your mansion in Kotonu. I did not speak to you. You don't know who a dossier is. You don't know who Abangim is that came to see you in the Republic that I sent to come and see you. You don't know who Zulimike is anymore. You deny speaking to me on the phone before you went into that meeting in Kotonu. You deny it. You are an evil man, so I'm not surprised. Full of deceit. Self deceit. So you no longer know. You say, I of course, I did not give you money directly from prison. I asked somebody to give it to you. His name is Uchen Nasiebu. Have you forgotten? You people are the problem. You are an evil man. But you're hiding under Niger Delta. Talking rubbish. But you're an evil man. In this case, you look like a pig. You're an evil man. No wonder. I'm not surprised. All you people know is to backbite, envy, gossip. An evil man will sit down. He will be shedding a gussy, talking rubbish, gossiping. That's all you do. I'm not surprised. All your useless militancy was just pure 419 you're doing. You're a criminal. So you think everybody else is a criminal. And in broad daylight, you deny the money that I asked you, Jen Nasie. So you think, so I will be in prison and I will leave prison as a witch. As I want to, I will fly to you and give you money. You, you want to play smart. You want to show us you're, you're clever. But you're not clever. Who Jen Nasie will give you the money? Come out and do a video. I say, Jen Nasie will never give you any money. 
Bring Quran with you. I'm telling you, that God you worship will strike you dead. Bring Quran with you. And swear that each and I say will never get there. On my own instruction. Swear that I never spoke to you. I want you to swear that I never spoke to you from prison. I spoke to you. You're a liar and a creep. You're a thief. I give you names. I knew you would lie and you would deny. Like some of you claiming you are Niger Delta, but you are Igbo. In Cross River State. In Cross River, you are Igbo. You speak Igbo language. You have four market days. You circumcise your children. The same way some fools from there are saying, oh, we are Niger Delta. We are related to people from, uh, from Ondo. Is how in your own deception and stupidity you've been found out. Did I not send a dosium to you? This creek pig, did I not send a do you don't know who is a dosium? Chick a dosium. I sent them to you. I sent Hawaiian to you. I sent them to me to you. Three of them came on my order to travel from Europe to continue to have a meeting with you. Why did I give you 20 million? I gave you 20 million as a starter of all the plans that we had, and you're busy lying. Did General Playboy not come to your house? Did General Playboy not come to your house? He asked and we sent him that we gave you money. Are you going to deny it? And you asked your boys to shut the door that you're not at home. Did Playboy go to your house or not? Did we give you money to protect us at Mpo or not? I'm giving you facts and figures. How much were you given from Paul? Five million. I approved it. From Paul to defend us 2016 at Mpo. The massacre that, that um, Amnesty keeps talking about till today. At Mpo. Have you forgotten? You said something was coming. You are the one that went and told the zoo that we have no arms and they came to Paul to slaughter us. It's what it, it came from you. And you're an evil man. I'm not surprised. Now you have agreed that you're an evil man. You think I can lie. You don't know. He said, he said, Let me tell you something. My training. I learned something when I did one of those law courses as an elective. Never ask a question you don't have an answer to. I know it was a trap yesterday and you fall into it. I know because I didn't give someone so much details last night that you come out today to say I gave you no money because you think you're smart, but you're foolish. You are very, very foolish. Uche Nasebo Mimi gave you the money. I want you to do a video. Come out tomorrow and say Mimi never gave you any money. Come out and do another video. Because you have no shame. See how a grown-up man is lying. Instead of you to address the issues, I'm just trying to draw. I want the world to know how an evil man behaves. That is why we are, that is why John Jaweed did not go to school. He's controlling our lives because of this type of selfish, greedy behavior. All of you, your masters are panicking in, in the caliphate. They maybe have given Yoruba people working for Facebook more money. Hey, please reduce it. You forgot that people are listening via Radio Biafra app. People in Biafra that are listening via FM. People are listening via TuneIn. People are listening via um, Sweet Radio. People are listening through Country Radio. Do you seriously think people are even satellite? You think people are only listening to, uh, to, to, to Nam the Kano via Facebook? Is that what you think? People are listening on, on YouTube. Live channel on YouTube. You don't know that? That's how daft people are. That was why Alan Dume said that not only the politicians, that Nigerians also are stupid. That's what he said. You are denying something. I called you on the phone. You and I had a conversation. My men had a meeting with you in Kotonu. You are denying it. Omiomio sent you money. You are denying it. <laughs> I doubt you are a militant. I don't think so. You are just there eating pork. Look at how bloated you are. Bloated pigs everywhere. They are the people in the cross. Where the, oh, the cross river? Cross river is saying it's not a delta. It's like look, and we keep quiet like fools. If not for IPOB. People, when they talk that rubbish, some of you, you're bum e rats, e rats. They intimidate you and you run. 
You just, like a fool, you abandon an argument that you have won by nature. These are your relatives in Cross River, in Delta State, in Rivers, in Aquaibon, in Bayansa. They are your blood relatives. I said blood. Somebody, a janja weed from somewhere, is on Facebook that uh, leave Cross River and you run away. Some idiots will say to us, uh, but um, uh, can't you make it only Igbo only, Igbo nation? And look at the idiots, idiots campaigning for Igbo nation. And I ask them, do you know you have relatives in Benue? Do you know your people are in Cross River? You're talking about Igbo nation of uh, five Igbo speaking. You people are daft because you didn't go to school. Some of you are professors, but you know nothing. Absolutely nothing. Are you more Igbo than somebody from Abo? You are from away. Are you more Igbo than somebody from from Ebanke? Igbo Akre, that's the name. Are you more Igbo than somebody from Otaka in Obubra? How are you more Igbo than that person? Is there any center we have in Igbo land? So uh, as equidistant as you are to that very location, that makes you more Igbo. The answer is no. So I will ask you again. Can somebody tell me why they will be campaigning for Igbo nation of only five states when you have Igbo people in Cross River? Who are they? People in the neighborhood, some idiots, they go to Sahara reporters, they'll be writing nonsense, they'll be writing garbage, writing pure crap. They're intellectuals. If the idiots write a PhD or LND, rubbish. Black people, you think having a degree, PhD, SSD gives you common sense? You hide behind your envy to write rubbish. That is why your politicians are useless, useless in this life, useless to the core. They can't defend you. The answer, GBK, Omeji. Chedema in Cross River State. Some of you now will go to one of those their platforms and the Yoruba idiot from Obomo Show will come and write rubbish. Hey, you want to take Cross River because of the oil? Instead of you to say that I have my brother there, his name is Chibike. I have my brothers there, his name is Chibike. And it's not oil. I am looking for Chibike, my relative. Inobubra. Some of you shy away from a debate. If not for IPOB, where would you be today? Janja weed will make pepper soup with your with your with your brain. Unbelievable. Why was it I asked them all the time? Why was it that Nam they are sick away? And all the alleged great people leaders, they never sought to unite with their kids and kin. Never. It was, um, I think it was um, the, the, the Ohanes of, of um, Ralph Uwechwe that managed to bring in Delta and Yoma and then some parts of Rivers. The rest of the, the Southeast, Southeast, five Igbo speaking states. How about the Igbos in Benue? How about the Igbos in Cross River? How about the Igbos in Edo? How about the Igbos in Delta? How about the Igbos in Rivers? How about the Igbos in, in Abaibon? You are more Igbo than them. You are asking me to restrict Biafra agitation to only five states. Are you more Igbo than those people in a pipe bomb? It's, it's now becoming clear, isn't it? Very, very clear. Our, en our enemies are wasting their time. They know we know more than they do. We are schooled. And they are going to be okay. All these so-called great leaders, they failed in the simplest task that Elohim asked them to do. He sent the message through Mazen Bono GK. All throughout 1940s and early 50s, Mazen Bono GK kept telling Azikiwe, forget one Nigeria, let's unite our people. Azikiwe said no. Look at the mess we're in today. And somebody wants me to regard Azikiwe as a great man. I don't think you know what you're talking about, honestly speaking. Now, let us look at what happened. I told you that they have ganged up. People don't understand the level of conspiracy against 
Biafra, the world of Biafra. And I keep I kept asking myself, why is it that any time these people they hear the word Biafra, they want to go mad? Something there is something about Biafra that is driving the British man mad. Something. What is that thing? What is it about Biafra? That when you go to the UN and you mention the word Biafra, everybody will run away from the room. That was why I knew that I knew that Tony was lying. He didn't discuss Biafra. Because if you go to the capitals of the world and discuss Biafra, when they finish dealing with you, if you come outside, you will suffer from, from, from typhoid and malaria and convulsion immediately. You ask yourself, but why this hatred for Biafra? What did, did we actually do anything? They are the ones that killed us, five million people. Yet they are afraid of us. That is how I know. When somebody says, oh, well, but we are lobbying, but I will tell you, you are lying. Because if you go to the UN and call a meeting at the UN and uh, you put on the on the display board the word Biafra, they will stand up and they will walk out. But that hasn't stopped us, has it? We are still going. Stronger than ever. Stronger than ever. They can't stop us. They can never. And they know it. When people come to you and they're lying to you, I expect our people raised with some gumption to understand that these are agents of darkness. I said something about the pig. A simple trap. I said to him, I gave you 20 million. And I know. I know that being the criminal he is, he will say, oh, no, the candidate did not give me any money. He will not tell you that I instructed Uche Nasiebu to give him that money. If he was an honorable man, he would have said Uche Nasiebu gave me money or talk to me about money. Mpo Masaka. Do you know who is to blame? It's the pig. Masare Tukumbo. We gave him money. He said they will come to protect us at Mpo. They never came. I was in prison. I was weeping. I was crying inside the prison as they were slaughtering our men. And I asked Omiomi, I said to him, where are the things you promised me is coming to Mpo? He said, oh no, that then somewhere near the head bridge. I said, when are they going to come on board? That men are falling. He ate that money. <laughs> I sent men to him in Iguacha. He wants me. I will tell the whole world. I sent men to you in Iguacha. You ate the money. You left my men outside. In fact, have you forgotten how many men were arrested in Iguacha and how they were arrested? Who arrested them? Is it not your own boys that uh, uh, were riding in, in DSS, um, uh, uh, what's it called? This is their truck. Pointing out my men in Iguacha. When they went to the place where you said they are going to sleep, was anything there? They were telling me that there's nothing there. Nowhere for them to sleep. Did you ask me to bring money to fence the place or not? To make it more secure? Yes, that you're, a, you're a thief. So I will expose you to the whole world. Did you or did you not? Ask for more money to build fence. And I said, how about the money that I gave to you? What is it for? Are you going to deny it? Did you change and able to send money to you or not? And how many times? Where you sent money. How many times since you think you're smart, you are denying I didn't speak to you. And I'm asking you, the meeting we held in your place, I joined by teleconference. Three of my men were there. I flew them from Europe into Kotonou. A dozen abanyum. True or false? Simple question. You're a liar. Just like your counterpart working for the ginger weed. Nkabu constitution adokrana kana pari benin. He will open office flat file. He won't allow people to speak. Always uh, yapping like a canary. I made allegations against him last night. The only thing he remembered to refute was the hundred naira that Moda talked about. How about the rest? Where in America were you? You claim you are fighting for Biafra. Where in America?
Show us a copy of the document you submitted. Until now, you've not done it. Or you are trying to do like Femi Adeshino. You want to forge it? You want to go to Oluwole and tomorrow morning, they've opened now. There's no more restriction. So you want to go and forge papers? Bring it out. Let's see. It should be in your folder. Just to roll it out. Let's see. You claim you want to talk Biafra in America, yes? Bring out the documents now, let's see. You think you're smart. You claim you, you, uh, you also claim that you got me out of um, prison. A job for today has written. He doesn't know who you are. So I ask you, what do you gain by lying? What, what, what is the gain? So the, the Janja with handling you told you to go and keep lying. You people are talking rubbish when our land is under siege. What we need is guns and weapons. And you're talking rubbish, talking jazz with BBC. Talking nonsense. How do you build the economy? Economy where? You people are finished. You people are finished. All you do is you gossip. All you do is you go, every day you're gossiping. Every day. How do we bring down Anam the Khan? How do we bring down IPOB? But you cannot. Not in this life. Not in the next. You cannot. Today now you know you're, you're, you're a new man. But if I say, you, say you, you are dancing like a headless chicken. You are, you are, you are doing bully, 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 job, bully, bully, job. Next has happened. You have used your own mouth to confess. Yeah, no wonder you're the way you are. Only an able man can be that. Wicked and useless and treacherous, Nanibo man. We have our faults, so forget you, but we our own fault is, uh, is, is is deadly. Defense fund, defense fund, defense fund. I said, show me an evil man in the whole world, an evil man that can give you one hundred thousand dollars and say, go and fight for free. No evil man can do it. Evil women can, maybe. No evil man. And the full know this. That's why they have come. They know you, you people. They know you people are so stingy. You are so evil. You so much hate yourselves that you cannot bring out one dime to save your people. They, they full and know this about an evil man. How many millionaires do you have? Is Peter not a millionaire? Is Salud not a millionaire? Who owns Orient or your block in our land? Is it not um, um, a mechanic? Don't they have money to buy weapons to defend our land? But they won't do it. All your ex-governors, all your ex-senators that stole money, do you think they will do it? Of course not. But in the north, in Fulani land, they are building a trunk of gas. All of them combined together. All the money they have stolen from everywhere they come, they hold a meeting in Kaduna. They say, This is what we're going to do, and they're suppressing you. And fearing that you will now come together to realize who you are, they now sent the people like Tony Nadi to go and poison your minds to accuse Nam the Khan wrongfully for not. I have done nothing wrong to solve these people. I lost my mom and I lost my dad in this very fight, yet they are not satisfied. They are not, you see how wicked, these people are so evil, they are not satisfied, they can never be. Until I die. And then they will be slaves. And then they will make, he's, all, he's, all, he, he's a Muslim. He's part of them. So he's waiting for them to come. So they will make him like a funja. They will make him the, 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 uh, 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 Caliphate. He will be the Sultan of Egypt. He thinks our people don't know this. That's what he's thinking. Somebody said I should stop exposing them. Who told you? know who we are? We expose. You might come on a potato. Expose everybody. What knows that I don't know about? So in their next life, they will not lie. Every time lies. What? How did I? I said I will not vote in last election. That's all. And they kicked off. Because he's taking money from his friends in the north. And I'm asking him. Can you please, you claim you're a militant, can you tell me where you fought battle with the Nigerian government before? I have videos of mine. Can you show me a video of you? Show me, tell us the date and time when you fought a peace battle with Nigeria. If not for Heliocca, you are nobody. Heliocca made you who you are. 
you were busy stealing oil from doing a bit of bunkering. And I'm just looking at them. They're talking rubbish. Do you know the word Biafra is from here? I'm just laughing at them. No research. No thorough examination of anything. No laying out the facts. Just come out and be talking. They've, and so he has heard a, a Janja Weed or maybe a Yoruba Iraq say, uh, Biafra is a Portuguese name. The idiot took it. And made a fool of himself. Show me the word of Biafra in Portuguese language. I challenge anybody. Go and show it to me. Show it to me. I dare you. Show it to me. And do you know that Biafra is the anglicized version of the original name? Do you know the original name? You know you don't. These are the so-called intellectuals, man. You don't know the meaning of Biafra. You don't know where it came from. You don't know where it's... You have no clue. You have no idea. You have no idea. At all, at all, at all. But you're busy yapping nonsense, as always. Yapping crap, always. I will teach you this evening. I am going to look at the BBC wartime correspondent. I said to you yesterday that BBC is evil. I want to prove it to you today. Anything I say, when I push you, I show you where to land. I can't come out to accuse you needlessly. I told you, I told you, Tony Maddy is a, I didn't say he's a fraud. I said he's a non-entity. He's a nobody. He's an errand boy for the establishment. I leveled four accusations against him. All you can tell you, think about to defend is uh, uh, the Canada, that criminal. He's, uh, he said I, 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 he should have seen I didn't support um, more those hundred naira per head every month. All the things I said about him, he couldn't defend. He couldn't defend any of them. You claim you're working for Biafra. All those idiots, you're deceiving. You're a freedom fighter. I say, show me one document. With Biafra in it. Or with even your upper upper Niger. Or no one will you be. Since we're asking them of the nearest river to my to my this day, to my house is um my in my village is Iyokata. Maybe I should form my own Iyokata Congress. Um those who are living at home Imo will form Imo River Congress. Since we are not asking the names of uh, of streams and rivers. And those who are living near Otampa will answer Otampa, uh, Otampa, Otampa, Otampa Congress. That's how daft you are. You claim you went to school. You want, you want to name your people after a river, ordinary river. And you claim, you said you went to school. You're educated. <laughs> we are going back to Frederick Forsyth. A conscientious BBC correspondent. I want Biafrans to know who their enemies are. That they hate us. Not for anything we have done. But because God blessed us as a race. If you don't know. Listen carefully. The, this is Frederick Forsyth. The federal government in Lagos. That is Gowan's government. Was a brutal... Listen, brutal military dictatorship. Has anything changed you today with um, Aisha's boyfriend? Has anything at all changed? Look at what is happening today. Anytime the North is in power, there is absolute totalitarianism. The worst form of governance. This was happening in 1967. Frederick Forsyth was writing. The same thing you hear. That was why the man said, "Ali Ndume, that Nigerians, politicians, and also Nigerians are all you. You are all deceiving yourselves." That's what he said. Now listen, the federal government in Lagos was a brutal military dictatorship that came to power in 1966 in a bloodbath. During and following that coup, the northern and western regions were swept by a pogrom in which. Thousands of residents, Igbo, thousands of residents, Igbos were slaughtered. This is a white man writing. The federal government did not lift a finger to save the slaughter of Biafra because when they say Igbo, once you come out and they start pursuing you to kill you, remember that our mothers tied to peace rubber. 
You don't know if the woman is from Asian. You don't know if she's from Ogoja. You don't know if she's from uh, Kalabari. You don't know if she's from... Once they see you, you're tying two piece wrapper, they pursue you and they kill you. Are you following what I'm saying? So it's not about Igbo. They, they, they use the word Igbo, it's about, uh, we're against Igbo, to make you to become very docile, so they can conquer you. And Yoruba is the one shining the light, the torch. Oh, Hannah, bring a torch. Yoruba is pressing torch for Fulani. You don't know that? Yoruba, they are the ones pressing their torch for Fulani to invade. If you think that as a Biafran, if you like Biafik, if you like uh, Ibibio, if you like uh, 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 Urobo, you should, once you're a Biafran, they hate you. It is natural. It's like being a Jew. There is nothing you can do about it. You are hated by nature. Do you understand that? Somebody wants to form lower Aba Congress. Oh, please don't form her. Oh, uh, Onye Mary. It's free man. It's called. Please don't form her. Aba. They want to form Aba lower Congress. <laughs> hey! Ignorance is a disease. Even with your so-called BSC, LLB, BA. It doesn't mean you have anything in your brain. It doesn't mean anything. Listen. They were killing Igbo people. Once your mom ties to a piece of rapper, you are a dead meat. The federal government did not protect our people then. Never protected the Biafrans. Never. That even somebody that was British educated... Then he was a Colonel Gowon. But listen to what a white man said. He said that Gowon was a puppet. Like opus of them. Listen, Gowon was a puppet. The true rulers were a group of northern colonels. The cabal did not start today. Fulani cabal did not start yesterday or did not start with the death of um, Buhari in 2017. He's been there always. It was the cabal that said because we want to kill Christians from the south, the best thing for us to do is to get a Christian from the north, from the middle belt, and support him to do the killing for us. The same thing they are doing now. Instead of them to come and say, we are coming to take over your land, they said, no, they are resettling. Alamajiri. So that when you are writing to the world and you are saying, is when they say, it's Alamajiri. You might be thinking, but what is Alamajiri? They will not tell it is the full army people who are coming to forcibly take over your land. That was what they did to go on. They said to go on, you will go for us. This Igbo is still, you know, uh, uh, you know, even the middle belt. They were filled with hatred and envy for the Igbo man. Middle belt. All of them. All of, the TV is, they hate for no reason. The only reason why they hated an Igbo man was because an Igbo man was successful. God blessed him. Wherever he goes to, God will bless him. He will do well. He will be a son. Don't mind their stinginess and their wickedness. That comes with it as natural as well. But they always did well. They said the zoo is jamming our radio back home. I don't know what is going on. I have no idea. What is. But we're going to get far more superior systems than this. Don't worry about that. They, they know the gospel is hitting them very hard. They forgot that there will be a replay. People will replay and replay and replay and replay so they are wasting their time. Don't worry yourself too much about that. They said the radio in Biafra land is down. Is that correct? Our deputy is that? No, no, it is going very well from here. So I don't know why it should be down. I don't know. Are you sure it is down or maybe some... Some Yoruba trying to discourage our people. I don't like Yoruba, of course. You know, some Yorubas fought for Biafra. Some Yoruba men fought and died for Biafra. And we remember them. Their heroism and their bravery. Remember all of them. The Yorubas that fought and died for Biafra, we honor them. Those I am against are the traitors. The same way I am against the traitors in Biafra land. The same I am against the traitors in Igbo land. In a land. Whenever I see traitors, I attack them. I, I can't stand them. A traitor should not be alive. They come to you and they pretend they are part of you. Hey, we are, I'm fighting for you. Oh. But why are you not talking about the Fulani in our forest? That's when you know who is who. 
That's when you know who is who. We must continue. They never lifted a finger. They used to go on. They fronted him to go and do the killing of the Christians. The crisis deepened. And in early 1967, Eastern Nigeria, then our land, the land of Biafra, we sought restitution. Now listen to what the British did. I am going to shock all of you. Now you understand what is happening in Nigeria today is as a direct result of the wickedness of the British government of the time. I want to prove it to you. Listen very carefully. The British organized a bully conference. The reason why they organized it was not to find a peaceful solution. It is to give a cover, a, some sort of legitimacy for the genocide, for the Holocaust they were about to unleash. According to an English man, Frederick Forsyth, that said that what Britain did was a shame during the war. It was Britain that organized the Aburi Conference. And in that Aburi Conference, Gowon was there. Ojuku was there. Two of them drank tea and brandy and agreed that the zoo called Nigeria will go back to a kind of a confederation. Back to the 1960, or should I say 1963 constitution. Are you following? Everybody will be on their own, you know, developing their resources. Do you know what happened? On returning back to Lagos, now listen to this, you'll be shocked. On getting back to Lagos, at the instigation of the British, in fact, the Connors, the Cabal in the North, including then the other of Benin, understand this, it is the truth, including then the Oba of Benin, the Oba of Benin, <laughs> Lord have mercy, it is the truth, it's history. They ganged up because of their hatred for the Igbo man. They said, no, we no go agree, oh, we no go agree. Do you know they tore up a bully conference? And they asked go one, I think it was last year, why didn't you honor a bully conference? He said, because the Duke came back and announced it first. Can you see? He's the one they said he's leading prayer. And they said somebody invited him to come to Biafra land to pray. I am looking for the name of that person. I can't find. And I'm telling the whole world today, please. Can you give me, give us the name of the person inviting go on? Give us his name. So you're telling me that in Israel, after killing 6 million people, that he, although Hitler is dead, his children can be invited to come to Israel? Do you see how foolish we are? Do you see when I tell that an, an evil man is a poison unto himself? Do you see what I'm saying? Forget all that nonsense you are saying. It's vast matters. They are poison unto themselves. You want to go and invite somebody that killed 5 million of us in a period when we are crying over the death of our people? Somebody wants to go and bring go one to come and pray in Biafra land. Go and bring him now. Go and bring him. No, no problem. Go and bring him. And then you will know what happened to you. They are a useless set of people. It was go on that destroyed that bully conference based on the advice from the generals, from the colonels, from the north, the cabal, from the north. Fulani, on advice from the British, said no. But that was what you negotiated. So now ask yourself, why would Britain say no to confederation? Because Britain wanted to concentrate power in the hands of the Fulani they know are very foolish, very primitive, very they know that very well. That is the how they can be taking oil and gas and nobody will bother. All they need to do is to say to Fulani, do you want to remain in power? Fulani will say yes. Then the British will say, who can to take, to take your oil without paying? The reason why there is a place called Nigeria is because the powers that be, those that do, who, the people that are called the stakeholders in the zoo, not you uh, animals from, from Nigeria, no. Europeans, they take oil for free from the zoo. For free. They don't have to pay for it. That is why. So they are afraid. If you elect a sensible... Some of you don't know that Jonathan was removed because it was coming to a period of oil licensing renewal. Some of you didn't know that. No, no, you didn't know. The oil licenses were renewed in 2016. So, Jonathan had to be out before 2016. 
That's how they got rid of him in 2015. So he didn't know that. You were, he died. It's our oil. You want our, you want us because of our oil. <laughs> Idiots everywhere. Look at the pig. He doesn't even know. He doesn't know all these things. They said no to Aburi because Britain said to Fulani, Fulani, do you want to keep on? You don't want to give you. You want Britain to hand over Nigeria to you? They said yes. Okay then, say no. Fulani said no. But the same accord you negotiated. Why then are you invading Biafra land and claiming that Biafra seceded? Do you see how they lied to everybody? They went to history books. Oh, secessionist, secessionist nation, Biafra. You can never go there and see that the, there was an agreement, an Aburi Accord, that Nigeria broke at the instigation of Britain. The same Britain went and told historians, told geographers, told commentators, Biafra is a secessionist state. Do you see how many enemies you have and how powerful they are? It is not everybody who comes to you and says to you, I am fighting for Biafra. That is fighting for Biafra. Like does he do? Like he do the lower Niger Congress has nobody. It's only one man running from one studio to the other. Only one person. They're promoting him because he sponsors in the music and that's all. A man of integrity and honor. So we are led to believe. But we know what happened at the Biafran Navy sector. You know good that we know. I'm not going to go into that. And now you understand. Some of you are so easy to deceive. Any idiots can come out one day and say, oh, I'm for Biafra. I mean, the, the next thing you hear is, oh, why don't you all cooperate together? <laughs> because we don't know anything. We don't know. We don't reason. Anybody can come out now. So you don't know that the, the zoo, the Janjaweed can sponsor people. It is called Osho Provocator. You don't know they can sponsor people to come and be pretending they're fighting for Biafra. Just, be giving it, just to be giving them information. Don't you know that? How come your brain... So anybody who gets up in the morning and says, Oh, we are, I'm fighting for Biafra, I'm here. The next rubbish you will hear is, Oh, why don't all of you cooperate together? <laughs> oh, dear me. We must continue. Frederick Forsyth went on to say that it was the killings of our people and the failure of Aburi that led Ujuku to declare Biafra 53 years ago. Yesterday. <laughs> he said, "We I, to this very day, I have come to attest to the true meaning of this Niger Delta. It is not a language that is known to any of us. None whatsoever. But it was an English word. The word Niger is the anglicized version of the Latin word nigger, which means black. Because when I explain something, I explain it right to the source. I don't cut it from the middle. Niger is anglicized version of nigger, black. That's what it means. So the correct word is nigger delta, if you want. Nigger delta, is that your name? And anybody say, oh, the Niger Delta is your name. Are you a nigger? Are you a nigger? Ask I me. Mean. Because if you are, we'll start calling you niggers then. Because Niger is the English version of nigger, which is Latin for black. Is it making sense? Have you, is your stupidity now becoming a little bit clearer? Just a little bit. The Delta region. And I have asked you many times, there is a Delta region in Mississippi in America. Are you related to them? There is a Delta region in Limpopo. Are you related to them? There, is a, there are people inhabiting the Delta region of the Nile, the Great Nile. Are you close to them? Why are you making a mockery of your stupidity by talking about Niger Delta as if you're dumb? Talking about Niger Delta as if you're hopeless. You didn't go to school. <laughs> oh dear me oh dear me it's an English word given to us we cannot allow it to hold Adaka Boro fought under that banner I respect that but it was a mistake it shouldn't have happened it shouldn't I don't condone evil it should not have happened 
It was wrong. It was wrong for the BBC and the British government to connive together to destroy Biafra. It was conni conni conniving between BBC, the BBC that brought you, because of IPOB, they gave you BBC. Ibo. The job of BBC Ibo, was to neutralize IPOB. They came, found out now what Atakatelo. <laughs> you can't do anything to us. They came with their tricks and their games. They found out how formidable IPOB is. And where we have them is how we're going to keep them until Biafra comes. Then we review their position. But BBC can never be a friend of Biafra. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. Don't say I didn't warn you. All of you idiots, every. Hey, I'm going to. I, I went to BBC. I gave an interview to BBC. They brought their bodyguard, henchmen. They thought I was coming with IPOB to come and fight them. I gave an interview in English and in Igbo language. Before that, when I was in prison, my wife gave an interview to BBC, but to BBC English. You know what they did? They cut it. She gave an interview for 50 minutes. They cut it down to three minutes only. <laughs> that was the idea they were evil. I said, okay, let me try that. Maybe it was a mistake. I came out. In London, I went to BBC where they hired. They didn't want me to come to their studio. They didn't want to offend the follow me by asking me to come to BBC Bush House to do an interview. They sent me to, uh, to, to, to what's it called? Um, to, um, what's the name again? To Canning Town, more or less. To Canning Town, yes. I did an interview. BBC English, BBC Igbo. Till today, the BBC English never aired. Till today, the BBC Igbo, they, they bought, of course, he tried, that young man. I feel sorry for them. And when I when I go against BBC Igbo, it's not about our people working there. No, I have nothing against them. A man must work. They must eat something. They must feed their families. I understand that. But BBC Igbo is BBC is evil. They don't mean well for Biafra. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. I know them on a personal level, a personal experience. All the things I said about the zoo, they never published. Never. Because I saw one girl, I think she's from, I don't know where she's from. She was, her face wasn't very happy. Because in the interview, of course, uh, they asked me why they call Nigeria Zoo and explained to, they made the meaning to them. And the Ibo girl was saying, yeah, yeah. They know it's true. That Nigeria is a zoo. Who doesn't know that? Only a fool. Foresight said, listen, I arrived in Biafra capital in Yenugu on the third day of the war. In London, I had been copiously briefed by Gerald Waters, the head of the BBC West Africa service. BBC, oh, please listen, BBC. What I did not know was that he was the obedient servant of the government's Commonwealth Relations Office, which let them metamorphosed into the FCO, which believed every word of its high commissioner in Lagos. I want you to listen. After today, you will not doubt anything I tell you in life. You can never, I can't lie. I'm never to ask God is my witness. I don't lie. What for? Are you going to beat me? If I tell you the truth, can you do anything to me? The answer is no. So I tell you the truth. Remember, all these years I've been telling you that the ambassadors they have in Nigeria never relay the truth back home. They never do. And here is a proof. As far back as 1967, when Igbo people were being slaughtered in the north, by which I mean Biafrans, when Biafran was under siege, when Gawar reneged on Aburi, the British High Commissioner in Lagos was relaying only lies back to London. He's here from Frederick Forsyth. He's a white man. He's an old man now, but a courageous one at that. <laughs> Listen on. What I did not know was that this man called Gerald Waters was an obedient servant of the government's Commonwealth Office which believed every word the British High Commissioner in Lagos, David Hunt, was feeding them. It took two days in Enugu to realize that everything I had been told was utter garbage. Everything the British government was saying about Biafra, everything the BBC was telling people was a lie. Do you see why I hate the BBC? Do you see why I feel... So, Nyangwo, they claim he's an intellectual. 
So he doesn't know all these things. Why wouldn't Nian Wodo or any sensible person, having known all these things, accept to go to BBC on the 30th of May? Why would they? They can't come to us. They know they can't. They've come before we tell them to go to hell. Now, do you understand? And the world went there, couldn't ask BBC, where were you complicit in the death of our people? Yeah, I was talking about 100 naira a month to rebuild maybe a new airport. I don't know. <laughs> you see, BBC? Now, you believe me when I tell you that once you're a high commissioner, they didn't start today. Once you're an ambassador to Nigeria, the first thing they do is that they give you, they treat you well and give you as much money as you want. Right now, as we speak, if not for the work that IPOB did in America, the work that the concerned Christians did in the Middle Belt, nobody would know what is happening in the zoo. Nobody would know. Nobody would know. Do you know why? American ambassador has been America, USA, bribed. EU, bribed. Britain, bri I said bribed, bri given Solid cash. Not to report the truth from Nigeria. They don't know what is happening. Ask yourself. People dying every day. Accidental shooting. Uh, should I say accidental discharge? Everywhere. Bombs going off. Killings everywhere. Have you, have you seen it on BBC News? <laughs> have you seen it on CNN? The videos covering the death? No. No. <laughs> They are playing with us. BBC, what? Uh, I, I'm not blaming BBC. Fed, that would be something, man. BBC, my Facebook, I mean, that would be some people. Uh, uh, reduce it now. Why are you leaving me at 6.4? Uh, reduce it to, to, to only two people. And you see if I will stop or if I will continue. Mad people everywhere. You are playing. You're, you don't know where IP will be. These things you are doing, you think it can frustrate us? <laughs> you must be daft. Very daft indeed. We must continue. We must continue what we are saying. BBC is evil in every way. Every ambassador sent to the zoo, they have come to do the devil's work, to do the devil's bidding. They are locking our systems everywhere. Everywhere they are locking it up. I don't know why they are doing it, but that's entirely up to them. Entirely up to them. Entirely up to them. We are live and we are direct. And we're preaching the truth here. I had been briefed that the brilliant Nigerian army will kill off Biafra in two weeks. Or in four weeks at least. This is what Britain was saying. Britain said that Gohan's army, Nigerian army, will defeat Biafra in four weeks. Fortunately, the Deputy High Commissioner in Enugu, Jim Parker, a white man, told me what was really happening. It became clear, this is a white man right ago, it became clear that the rubbish believed by the Commonwealth Office and the BBC and the BBC stemmed from British High Commissioner in Lagos. A white man. British High Commissioner in Lagos. Are you paying attention? Are some of you following? Are you paying attention? You, you better pay attention. It was from the British High Commissioner in Lagos. He was a racist. He was a snob. Do you know why he's a racist? Because he realized in his research that only Biafrans can make a black man stand like a white man. So he was angry with Biafra. You think they don't understand? Once you write to them, they start to research Biafra. They start to research what Biafra is all about. Don't you know that? They begin to research Biafra very, very well. They research Biafra. This one researched Biafra, discovered that we are the children of the Most High. That Elohim is with us. The, the, I'm telling you, do you know they shut down my system? As bizarre as it sounds, that's what they do. But we must continue because they can't stop us. They cannot stop us. The British High Commissioner was a racist and a snob. 
He knew what Biafra meant. He knew what Biafra represented. He wanted to squash Biafra. He didn't want the light of God to shine in Africa. He did not want Africans to go to good schools. He never wanted black people to have good hospitals. He didn't want us to be developed as human beings. He knew, the British knew, that the only hope that Africa has is Biafra. The white man knows things. That is why they suppress Biafra. That is why they don't want Biafra to come. And unfortunately, some Yoruba are doing the devil's work, supporting them. I was, of course, they are not have. I'm sorry, Fulani is supporting them. You can see the wickedness and the hatred of a black man on a black man. Why don't you want Biafra to emerge? They don't know. They have no reason. They have no excuse. But what they know is that Biafra must not be. And what is the reason for that? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. That is how deadly the world is. And that is why I am bringing you this very gospel today. A gospel of heaven. I'm telling you the truth. They can't dispute what I'm saying. Nobody in their right mind can dispute what I'm saying. These are historical facts. Historical facts. They don't want Biafra to emerge. As the Bulgarians told Chief Justice P. K. Wokered of blessed memory. You know what they told P. K. Wokered? They said to P. K. Wokered, one Japan is enough. P. K. Wokered went to Ghana and asked for help. They said, one Japan is enough. We don't want another Japan in the world. They were referring to Biafra. When, when our kids invent something, you will expect white people to be happy. But they are not. How can niggas be producing machine? You think they're happy with Biafra? That is why when somebody goes out, when I see somebody fighting for Biafra, I know. The frustrations you will encounter if you're not made of the right stuff, so to speak, you will give up. You think when our kids build toys that they're happy? No, Fulani is not happy. Yoruba is not happy now. Hey! Because for Yoruba, his greatest achievement in life is that he has a higher position than an Igbo man. That's all. It doesn't matter what the Fulanis are doing. Yoruba is okay with it. The only problem Yoruba has is, is an Igbo man beneath me? That's all. People don't know the meaning of Biafra. I look at them and I laugh. I say, do you know what you're fighting for? Do you think this? Oh, but when is this your Biafra coming? When is it coming? You're, you're talking too much. Oh. You should, you should, you should come down and start fighting. <laughs> oh, dear me. The worst war you can fight is one in which you're not prepared. The invasion of Biafra land that took the Janja Wade nearly 40 years to plan. 40 years. The conquest, this conquest is executing now. 40 years to plan. They have the war chest. Their war chest now stands at nearly 22 billion US dollars. That is the funny war chest to maintain their hegemony. An Igbo man cannot bring out $100,000. It's impossible. Instead, he can take his village. Instead of an Igbo man to bring out $100,000 to defend his land, it's better for you to go and take his village. And that's why the Flanders have come. They know, they, they know Igbo, there is no way an Igbo man can bring out one to buy weapons. It's impossible now. They know it. That's why they have come. And as they have come, they gave you the tractors like the pig from the creek. Uh, the idiot of Upper Niger. What her rubbish is called. They'll be confusing you. Oh, they are doing something. Oh, can, can you... Janja with and your village. Oh, can you see this constitution? Here, it says the preamble. I was that, but I got that. You're talking about preamble in constitution. Preamble. <laughs> oh, dear me. We must continue. We are live and direct. The whole world is listening. Mankind is at attention. This is radio. When we preach, the, everywhere comes to a standstill. Then they know it's the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> oh, come home and fight now. Come on, idiots. Mandela went on exile. George Washington went on everybody. Jesus Christ on exile. Moses on exile. 
uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad on exile. They don't because they don't go to school. They don't read. They know nothing. As soon as they graduate, uh, they call them from uh, just um, a politician will call them three thousand naira a week. <laughs> Iraq. They say oh, oh, correct, sir. Oh, correct. After doing courtesy in school, they come in and start yapping rubbish. They don't know history. That just like the 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 Greek pig. He doesn't know history. Uh, Biafra is a map, it's a confluence of River Non and River Non met River Cross. And uh, the water was turning. And it's Biafra. Look at the idiot. Look at what is coming out of the idiot's mouth. So you go for an interview, they ask you, Oh, this is Biafra you're fighting for. Well, what does it actually mean? He says, Via uh, the river came, it's from River Non to, to, to Gabon. And the, and the water was swimming. And the, uh, the Portuguese saw it. And the name is Biafra. Hey! Arrow. Arrow. Let me tell you what is happening. Listen very carefully, please. Listen very, very carefully. My brief was to report the all-conquering Nigerian army according to foresight. It did not happen. It did not happen. Naively, I filed this. When my report was broadcast, our high commissioner complained to the foreign office because I stole the truth from Enugu. I said I am in Enugu, the so all conquering Nigerian army. I can't see them. They are not here. Britain got angry. Are you listening? I don't know why we argue with some zoo animals. They don't have any brain. They can't reason properly. That's why they're in Nigeria. Somebody is a Nigerian. How do you expect that person to reason properly? A Nigerian is an animal. They don't reason very well. These are, these are wild beasts in the forest. They can't reason. We are their vice president is in charge of toilet. And the secretary to the government is the one making policy pronouncements. And you're telling me that they're normal? You're exchanging words with somebody who's an animal. Their vice president elected, allegedly, is now in charge of used toilet. How to revive latrine. And somebody who wasn't elected, Boss Mustafa, is now doing the job of the vice president. And you want to debate with such people, such fools, such idiots? Hey, my goodness. They say I insult them a lot that uh, people are listening. I said, because we are fools. If we are not fools in Africa, uh, why, why are we always finding things difficult? You have nothing. Your life is always upside down on a daily basis. Change it, it won't change. Allow those that want to change it to change you. No. Hey, zoo. I reported the truth from Enugu. I reported it, the truth as it was, as I saw it. But the BBC, we are biased. They accuse me of being pro Biafra and record me back to London. For writing the truth, I was sent back to London. Six months later, in February 1968, fed up with all the slavishness of BBC. The white hole. BBC connived. BBC, they hate Biafra. BBC is anti evil. BBC wants to destroy Biafra. BBC has been sent by the devil to destroy Biafra. According to Frederick Forsyth, not me. Frederick Forsyth. Why the British hate us? I have no idea. Why they hate us? I have no. Why Britain wants to see every Biafran killed? I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why. I keep asking them. Britain, why is it you want every woman killed? Why do you want every Biafran killed? What have we done to you? What did we do? No pain, no reason. But all of you must die. The vice president is in charge of toilet. According to Frederick Forsyth, listen carefully, I was recalled back to London, but I got fed up. I said, to hell with you. I'm going back to Africa. And Ojuku received me and said to me, so you have rejected the British propaganda. This very article is there. It's in the open. Everybody can read it. Instead of Ohanes and Dioshi, the so-called intelligence, all those idiots, they call it idiots, they call it it. Instead of them to go and read all these things, arm themselves with the facts and figures, then go outside and preach Biafra. They won't do it. 
Yes. Uh, he said, he, 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 he should hurry up for 2023, it's around the corner. <laughs> they, they think they're talking to fools. They think we don't have any brain. They think we know nothing. That's what they actually think. So if you say presidency is around the corner, an idiot will start jumping and campaigning. And we'll vote for the fool. <laughs> but this is corruption this year. Do as I tell you, God is my witness. If you do exactly as I tell you, we'll bring the zoo down in 2020. Do what I ask you to do. Not when I ask you to do something, you don't do it. Again. I start asking me, but, uh, which is what Sabo do. Sabo, ask Sabo to do Sabo will not do it. Huh? And then you come and ask me, uh, but, but you said uh, Biafra is going to come. But that thing you ask Sabo to do, Sabo will not do it. Never. That's who they are. That is the way they are. It was BBC. The obliteration of the Igbo race was the priority of the British. And they prepared the Fulani Janja weed to carry it out for them. What I find shocking is that Biafra men who should have recognized this danger from time, they have all abandoned their duty to listen to gossip from traitors. To listen to people like Tony Nader that has nothing upstairs. Absolutely nothing. Done nothing for Biafra. Nothing. Afraid to use the word Biafra. Afraid. Afraid. And he's fighting for Biafra through Lower Niger. So I can fight for Biafra now through Lower, Lower, uh, 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 Ijeta, Lower Ojeta stream. You're not proud of who you are. And you claim you're fighting for me. By lying. Wherever I go to, you go to. By lying against me. I don't know who you are. I have not done anything with you before. And you're lying against me. Because you're working for the enemy. And your days are numbered, I assure you. Your days are numbered. Come to Biafra land now. Just jumping up and down like a canary. Just nothing. Come to Biafra land. Within 24 hours, you'll be eaten alive. Your flesh will be torn off your bones. You'll be eaten alive. Because you're an evil man. You must tell the world that thing I stole from you. You must tell the world who I scammed. Because we have IPOB all over the world. You're calling it a franchise. All over the world. How do we get our people to understand what we are doing? Do you know the meaning of the word franchise? Do you know the meaning of the word franchise? I'm asking you. So when ANC was fighting, people were protesting all over the world. It's franchise? Hey. All you liars and workers of iniquity. It shall never be well with all of you. Never. Do what I ask you to do and Biafra will come. Just do it. And you see what will happen. The, you, the, the Asarok, the relaxing. Let COVID-19 finish. I will come with fire and bring... You see that Asarok? It will, it, before, it will melt before your eyes. I will so much disgrace Nigeria. The way I will disgrace Nigeria... Oh, China can remember. But the way I would, if they see a Nigerian, they will deport the, the idiot. Once you say a Nigerian, you'll be deported. I'm telling you the truth. I will, the way, how I will disgrace Nigeria, any year that hears it, in a million years to come, will say God was with them. I'm telling you the truth. Let COVID 19 finish. All that nonsense today. The, the, the boy is light skin. Uh, tomorrow they're not quite sure of his color. Uh, the other day he's a 45 year old. Another one is a 22. Nobody knows what is happening. All that game, you idiots. All that game that Yoruba is helping the Fulani to be protecting. That you know Asarok is empty. Every idiot. I said, I didn't say reasonable people. Because if you're reasonable, you would have known a long time ago. Uh, even Id idiots in the zoo, they know Asarok is empty. They know it. They know there is no present. They have no All we hear is uh, Osibajo open toilet. Osibajo is uh, now re refurbishing used toilet. No one has seen him. Do you think we are stupid? Asorok, do you think we are hopeless? Do you think that BBC not reporting what is happening in Asorok makes you safe? Who has not seen that there is no president in the zoo? Who hasn't seen that all the photoshopping going on? Are you telling me that BBC in Abuja, BBC in Lagos, they have not seen all the photoshop pictures? 
Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're telling me? Mad people everywhere. This idiots in the foreign dreamer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us the strategy. So if I tell you, you got to tell you your masters in the north. <laughs> but the strategy is, is working, isn't it? That is why everywhere is shaking. The reason why they are panicking everywhere is because they know IPOB, we are relentless, we are remorseless. We keep pursuing. We keep pursuing until we overtake, we overcome, and we subdue. You want me to tell you our strategy? What is your own strategy for removing the flood from our land? What is your strategy? You have none. Oh, show us your map. One simple explanation. Is your mom, does your mom tie two piece wrapper and they disappeared? Have you ever heard them again say, well, show us your boundary? That one is gone. And then after my exposure yesterday, today they have nothing to say. It's now about 100 uh, uh, Naira in uh, BBC program. I was having a sip of water. The Yoruba bought into all the garbage because it places an evil man beneath them. That is why Yoruba is supporting evil today. Yoruba knows there is no president. Yoruba media, they know very well that Ushibajo is in trouble. They have not seen Ushibajo for a long time. But the only fear they have is that once we announce it, the zoo will collapse. And the world will say, Nam, the canon has been vindicated. What their fear is, is their Yoruba pastors. Because their businesses will collapse. The world will say to them, how come you did not see this thing that Nam, the canon saw? That is why they are closing it up. If you don't know, let me tell you. You don't know how many enemies you have. You have no idea. Toilet. Vice president. And your boss are just so smiling every day. We are Nigerians, so. <laughs> hey! I don't support evil. We don't support evil from... We don't and can never. And that is how the affair is going to be. We can never support evil. Not now. Not tomorrow. Not ever. Do you know why I say the things that I do? Because we are whiter than white and whiter than snow. Spotless. That is why I say all the things that I do. If you don't know one I did, come out and say it. Uh, uh, defense fund, did you contribute? No. Do you know how much was contributed all over the world? No. Today I'm telling you. $142,000 all over the world. And we have it. More cocoa. Useless fools everywhere. Useless fools everywhere. Mad people. This is maybe everywhere. Everywhere. But things changed. British covert interference. Britain started to work for the zoo because Nigeria could not defeat Biafra. This is according to a white man. Nigeria could not defeat Biafra. And because of that, Britain got upset. Britain was very, very upset. They started to interfere in the war. They started to advise the, the Janjaweed from the north. They started to supply them with weapons. A contrary to the agreement, Britain started to give weapons to go on. <laughs> Fresh weapons to go on. Britain now set up an advisory committee. That was why I said that the Biafra War was the Third World War. That is what I was expecting. That was what I expected Nyan Wodo to say yesterday. Biafra War was the Third World War. Britain could not fight Biafra direct. They used the Fulanese and the Yorubas, the gullible Yorubas, to fight Biafra. It is here in secret papers from Britain. Britain fought Biafra, not Nigeria. Someone said, Nigeria, we want you are talking rubbish. It was Britain, it is here. Official government papers, official British papers from a British war correspondent. Britain gave military support advisors to Nigeria. The same way that Britain gave advice to the Jordanian army to defeat Israel in 1947. Britain, the, the, I don't know if Britain has, been, Britain has been programmed to fight the children of God everywhere. I don't know why. They have that in them. 
the entire officer class of the Judean army in 1947, 1948. We are made up of the British just to kill Israel. Are you aware of that? The same thing that Britain did. But do you know why they succeeded? Britain succeeded because of the template we used during the war. Chuku Vikabiyama was not ready. Now he's ready. Just do as we tell you. And watch miracle happen before your eyes. Just do as you're told. Britain was now fighting the war using our son. No, using Fulani, I will say. And Yoruba. I remember what I told you. All that Yoruba wants in life is for an evil man to be beneath. That is all. That is the ambition. No other ambition is, am I doing better than an evil man? That is their only ambition in life. And that is the truth. According to Frederick Forsyth, Britain set up an, a war advisory team for the Nigerian army. They inched into Biafra land. And we fought and pushed them back. Now, Britain could not win the war on its own using Fulani and Yoruba. Media, propaganda and lies. They now went to Russia to go and beg Russia. Russia brought in what is called the illusion bombers used in the Second World War. Russia deployed in that, that tiny Biafra, that same small Biafra, that small Biafra. Britain came to support Janjaweed and the Yoruba. Britain could not defeat Biafra. They went to Russia to go and bring Russia to join them, to help them to fight. Biafra war was the Third World War. I want to educate the world to know what happened. Something Opoko, Asian, Asian, the pig in the creek doesn't know. They brought Russian bomber illusion. They were dropping 1,000 pound bombs on the villages of Biafra and Russians were bombing on Russia. Now ask me, how did you offend Russia? In what way? Just no. Somebody should tell me. Did we ever offend Russia? In a, how? Why would Russia come to a, an impoverished, poor African country and be dropping bombs on them? And mind you, at that time was the height of the Cold War. Russia was fighting Cold War with Britain. Ask yourself this question: What would cause two enemies, Britain and Russia? In the Cold War, to now come together to go and fight one small, tiny, impoverished African country. As any day you answer that question, I know you're intelligent. Have you asked yourself that question? Why would Britain make peace with Russia to go and kill black Africans? Because Biafra is special. Now you understand. Let's continue. Russians were dropping bombs in our villages. We did nothing to Russia. We don't know who they are. They are like LNC. This is uh, uh, lower Niger people. We don't know who they are. But from somewhere they are dropping bombs oh, on us. We don't know who you are. Russia came to kill us as well. <laughs> Unbelievable. Missionaries knew and noticed what had happened. And they were coming out of the forest with children suffering from Kwashioko. Roman Catholic Church, they did very well. I commend them, especially those from Ireland, the Irish missionaries. May God bless them immensely. The Roman Catholic Church did a lot. The Anglican Church did nothing. <laughs> they said they formed the Church of Missionary Societies. They came down. They said they, have, um, uh, they, were, they were coming to deliver relief. All oh, was just camouflage. So that we can be going to Anglican Church and giving them money all the time. The people that came and worked hard on the ground was the Catholics. They were the Catholics. They came and they worked very hard on the ground. As the residents guide for the foreign news teams, I became somewhat overwhelmed. But at last, the full secret involvement of the British government started to be exposed. Britain was fighting Biafra. Not this. Who is Alamai to fight Biafra? You know, we are going to fight very soon. And when that war commences, Britain can no longer come in. <laughs> because now, uh, the whole world has eyes and ears. We will only fight the Alemajiri from the north. And you see what we're going to do to them. <laughs> that
There will be no more British help. Maybe the Chinese will try and help them. Uh, but we'll see what will happen. Our people think that they can run away from the war. The war is coming. You can't escape it. It's God's punishment on the Boris for selling their own kind. Slavery. All those people were dying and being killed in America by white policemen. Your ancestors sold them. Before the white man came, you started to sell your people. God, you know God, <laughs> he forgives, but he doesn't forget. There will be always be a price to pay. And that price is about to be unleashed. I'm sorry to tell you this. That war you're afraid of, <laughs> you're about to fight it now. The Fulanis brought it to your homes. And if you survive after this, then <laughs> you know indeed you're destined to survive. People are going to die. I'm sorry to tell you this. <laughs> People will die. We must continue. We must continue. Kwashoko everywhere. That same July, the Daily Express of London, another UK newspaper, the cameraman David Keynes, ran off a score of rows of film and took them to London. Back then, the British public had no idea what was happening. Do you know why? Because the BBC would not broadcast the truth as to what is happening on the ground. As Biafrans were dying of Kwashlokko, brought in by Awolo, or Bafemi Awolo was Kwashlokko. Death by starvation. Death by starvation. BBC never reported it. The same way they are not reporting the Janja with invading our land today. You ask BBC, oh, but I went to Soka and, uh, and we asked them, uh, they, they said it's uh, one village fighting another as if we are foolish. BBC, but you are telling us that we are dumb, we, are, we, we have no brain, that what we are seeing every day would that oh, she never BBC. Hey, BBC, BBC. The British public never knew. The British public did not know because the BBC failed to report the truth. British Broadcasting Corporation, why did they not report the truth? Because the UK public would have asked them, what are you doing about this? BBC was working hand in hand with the government to cover a holocaust. If our people working for BBC had any shame, they would resign tonight. They had any honor. BBC was evil. Evil. They are part of our problem as a race. We must continue. The people in England now discovered there were now questions in the House of Commons. A conservative MP out of anger named the child Biafra. Out of anger, a British lawmaker named the child Biafra. John Lennon was upset, returned his OBE. John Lennon, the famous John Lennon of Beatles, said, no, this is evil. It wasn't done by the BBC. This one was done by the Daily Express, a newspaper. Now you know who your enemies are. Go, go and talk about Biafra now at the UN. <laughs> you know what will happen to you. <laughs> if they won't poison you there. <laughs> they know what you don't know, that God loves you. You are the chosen children of God. The children of light. That is why Yoruba will envy you. They know God loves you. God blessed you from your mother's womb. They know this. Everybody in Africa, they know. That is why Yoruba's height of achievement in life is to see a subdued Yoruba man. And the Yoruba man is happy. Because the Yoruba man knows what you don't know. The Yoruba man knows that you are blessed. He knows that God, he knows you are a special talent. And subduing you is the highest achievement of a Yoruba man in life. As the resident guide to foreign news teams, I became somewhat overwhelmed. The World Council of Churches helped to buy some stupid aircraft. And Portugal helped. Portugal. They helped. God will bless them. And all the people that came that flew the aircraft. There was even one called Jesus Christ Airlines. 
<laughs> oh dear. <laughs> the people that brought us Jesus Christ killed us. And <laughs> that is what I find very funny with the British. They colonized us and gave us Bible and Christianity. Yet they supported the Muslims to kill Christians. <laughs> the irony of the whole thing is just laughable. Honestly speaking. It's just laughable. <laughs> Oh, dear me, love him. Facebook is trying their best, but we'll replay it over and over again. It will be replayed. <laughs> Britain gave us Bible, no? Jesus Christ said this, if they slap you here, turn to the side. Jesus Christ says, love one another, I love your neighbor. The same people that gave, <laughs> the same people that gave us the Bible, no? St. Andrews, St. Matthew's Church, St. Frederick, St. Agnes. They joined the people answering Abu Bakr, answering Mustafa, answering Abdul Mutalab to kill Christians. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Jesus Christ Airlines. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> black, Miss G. Black people, black. God forbid. Such stupidity is unbelievable. On a visit to London in the spring of 1969. I learned the efforts of the British establishment, the entire British government. They said we must kill Biafra. They organized themselves to say we'll kill Biafra. Every reporter, every journalist, every peer, every parliamentarian, every member of the House of Lords, every member of the House of Commons who had visited Biafra and reported on what they had seen, the carnage, the death, everything. Yet they sat down and said, nobody should talk about Biafra. Meanwhile, Ro Russia was bombing us. Egypt came. Oh. Egypt joined them. Oh. OAU joined them oh, to fight Biafra. And I'm asking the British, but before you came, we didn't know who the Fulanese were. How can we secede? I'm in my land. How can I secede from my own land? Was there any Nigeria before you came? The answer is no. So how, how can I then secede from my own land? I don't understand it. How can you call me a secessionist? Oh, I, I'm seceding from something a white man created. Oh, you should have told me now. A white man created Nigeria. So Nigeria is now superior to Biafra, superior to Duduwa, superior to Arewa. So anything a white man says is superior. If you want to break away from what a white man created, you are a secessionist. You are a secessionist. But when they were joining us together, what is the opposite of secession? I mean, I don't know. You are a, how can I put it? A colonialist. But it's good. Nigeria is good, but Biafra is not good. Why is Biafra not good? Because Biafra is African. And Nigeria is European. You see? That white black supremacy. That was what the Yorubas bought into. Very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. And uh, her Britannic Majesty Elizabeth II saw all of these things and did nothing. Because they hate Biafra. They have received their reports. Do you know these people that they are refining their own fuel? Do you know they're building aircraft? Do you know they're modifying aircraft? Do you know, do you want an African country to imagine a bunch of niggers to be building an aircraft? I said, no. Nobody wants to see a nigger building aircraft. Too. We want them in the farms, in the plantations. We want to kill them anytime we like. Nobody should support Biafra. That was what happened. Hauser people are not bad. Somebody is writing a, a Hauser person. I'm, how, I'm not saying that Hauser is bad. Everybody is good. I'm sure, even sure that there are some Yorubas who are good. There are some Igbo people who are good. There are some Biafrans who are good. There are some Egyptian people who are good. There are some, uh, even Fulani. I'm sure there are one or two Fulani people with conscience. I'm not saying that. But it's that the majority are evil. <laughs> That's the problem. The majority of Igbo people are selfish and very greedy. That is how it is. And that is what has led to their destruction. Or should I say the impending destruction. And for the majority of the Yoruba, being above an Igbo man is the highest achievement in life. 
It doesn't matter. If not, why would they know that as rock is empty, that Buhari is dead? Yet they are covering it up. Ask yourself why. Ask yourself why they know that Aisha is now in charge of the zoo. Ask yourself why they are allowing such travesty to obtain. Ask yourself what is Yoruba me? What is Yoruba gaining? What is it that Yoruba can say we are gaining from Nigeria? What is that thing that will make them support Nigeria? Because of their hatred for Nibu, man. That's all. If not, then tell me what else. Give me a reason why they will want one Nigeria to. I know why Flanagan wants one Nigeria. Flanagan, they need access to oil because they are lazy, they are primitive. Apart from cattle, they have, they know nothing. I asked you before, how many Fulani scientists have you seen? How many doctors have you seen from Fulani land? Why do you think they always go outside to contract outsiders to come and do work in the zoo? Because they said it from the beginning. Their fans are smart. We don't want them to build in bridges for us. They don't want it because it will make them look bad. That is the truth. What time is it? I don't want to exceed. It has just gone past two hours. I must quickly proceed. I wanted to teach something slightly small about the pig in the creek and his nonsensical offerings about Biafra and the origin of Biafra. He's a, he's a vital figure to tell you how dumb and how foolish he is. He doesn't know anything about Biafra. I want to school him. There are three names for Biafra. No, four, actually, four names. One is called Biafra. I've said this many times, listen. B-I-A-F-A-R, Biafra. One is called Biafraez. One is called by Afara, Afara, where I come from. I'll publish all these things later. Where I come from, Afara. B-I-A-F-A-R-A, -A -A, by Afara. There is Biafra. He doesn't know all these things. He said it's from, uh, from River Mount to River Fernando Po. Talking rubbish. But I want to let him know that the Biafra people, or should I say kingdom, was in the Cameroons. Located in the Cameroons. The same Biafra. What he doesn't know is when I tell you something, I substantiate it with historical facts. Facts. Indisputable. Allow me to teach this once again tonight and perhaps for the final time. I will make reference to it now and again. Please. The pig from the creek in attempting to play the role of a go on to the, for, for the caliphate because they're using him. Unless you can see, you don't know that caliphate. They're using him, of course. Anybody comes, oh, oh leave him now. Let him. Uh, he, the person is one of them. The pig in the creek. He decided to, uh, to, to try to show that he's an intellectual. He mentioned Chief Franco Pigo that we all respect and revere very much. And a German that knew, he knew more than Ojuku that our name was Biafra. And he gave Ojuku the reason why we should, not because of Battle of Biafra, no. He didn't know that uh, Franco Pigo was a historian. He was the principal of Okreka Grammar School, one of the best schools you have in Biafra land. Secondary school was, of course. He didn't know that. So he thought he thought Frank Copigo was like him. A doubt. Who did a few, maybe a bit of oil bunkering when he was about to sell kerosene to, to fellow smugglers. He saw somewhere and said, oh, the Portuguese saw what I'm moving and said, oh, it's Biafra. <laughs> this idiot doesn't know the pig in the creek. He does not know that Frank Pigo was a historian. And what did Frank... Upigo, Chief Frank Upigo, discover. He recommended the name, not because it's an job distributory or estuary, no. Because he knew what our name was. Facebook is not happy about this, but I'll tell you. I want to bury his ignorance tonight. Completely and totally. I want to bury the ignorance of the pig in the creek. I want to bury his ignorance about Biafra. This night. So next time he will not talk rubbish. I I sequencing one after the other. So you understand what I'm saying. Listen carefully, please. 
the conspiracy did not. You see what the British are doing? It didn't start today. Oh. The conspiracy against Biafra goes back almost 300 years, starting from the Portuguese. Starting from Portuguese. It was the Portuguese, it was a Jewish man with the Portuguese that recognized that this is also part of the Jewish family. There was a map drawn up by Robertson of Shoreditch. I've said this before. When there was only Zamfarabini and Biafra, Robertson traveled, he was an explorer, traveled through the desert and came into Zamfara and asked the Zamfara kings, who are the people living over there? The Zamfara kings told him they are the lost tribe of Israel. I have the map. Now, we proceed carefully and very methodically. The name Biafara came from the Afar region of Ethiopia, the root of the second migration from the land of Samaria. That is the reason why only the Biafran people are light-skinned on the coast of West Africa. Listen to me very carefully. I said, the only place where you can come to and they give birth to somebody who is almost white is only in Biafra land. Because of our bloodline from the land of Samaria, from the land of Ephraim and Manasseh. This is the second wave of the migration. All the way from Kush land, they migrated into Sudan, into Ethiopia the Afar region of Ethiopia, as they were migrating through that particular route, coming into the Cameroons, they retain their name, the calling of the house of Ephraim and Manasseh. Bia, to call, the calling of the house of Ephraim and Manasseh. They came through Afar. Do you know what happened? Geography tells us that they, when they were in Cameroon, they were called the Afar people, Biafar, B-I-A-F-A-R. As the migration continued into where we are today, the Portuguese came and gave and recognized who they were. They could not pronounce Biafar. They called them Biafara. Listen very carefully, please. There was a man that wrote something. Because successive kings of England, of um, Portugal, they suppressed all the information concerning their travel to Africa. They knew who Biafrans were, so they didn't want to write about it. This is in Portugal. Listen carefully, please. So, under the reign of King John II, 1481 to 1495, the Portuguese went to a great length to hide the history of Biafra. I've given you facts and figures. Not uh, where water was dropping up and down. The Germans came after them. After that, Manuel the First took over and made a, pro a, a, a royal decree. Anybody found discussing about West Africa and about Biafra will be put to death. These are official Portuguese papers. I know Facebook is going mad by this time. <laughs> Here we teach history. However, there was a man called Duet Pacheco Pereira who lived from 1460 to, 14, to 1533. 1460 to 1533, he wrote papers that after his death we are published as a collection called the Esmeralda. I want to depict to learn history, not rubbish. I teach you history for free. And as I'm teaching you, I'm giving you references. That is why the name Biafra is sacred to IPOB. None of you know, you don't know nothing about Biafra. You know nothing about it. All of you. Tonight, I teach you what it means to be a Biafran. He wrote papers. He lived from 1460 to 1533. They, those papers were called Esmeralda. It included writings on Africa and the Americas. And they were published. Even before Christopher Columbus claimed he went and discovered America, the Portuguese royal court, we are discussing Biafra. 
Duarte wrote, I'm sure the pronunciation is right, wrote in his Portuguese letters that the channel of the river, the pilot, the, the coastline of the land coming out into the sea, he gave the latitude to be 11 degrees north of the equator. Now, if you look at 11 degrees north of the equator, which has changed over the years due to advancements in mapping and GPS, this coordination takes us now into the north central Nigeria, which is Idoma land. <laughs> Are you listening to me? This is from Portuguese archives, scientific papers that the pig doesn't know about. You don't know what Biafra is. It's a, it's a Portuguese name. I look at the fools and I laugh at them. They know nothing. Absolutely nothing. They said that this, this place is the confluence at Omanpara. This very confluence where the water comes together. Benue River and Niger River. <laughs> Hello him. So, the land from Kogi down, as I have told you, Igala land. Hey, Chineke no nyebara. A Portuguese writer, Duarte. His name is spelled D-U-A-R-T-E. They have, the inhabitants of this country, they are called Befraes. The spelling is B-E-A-F-A-R-E-S. Hey, unu kelev Chineke na binigwe. They wrote, the same boundary that I told you. I told you Igala land is Biafra. I told you that Idoma land is Biafra, which is Lower Benue. I told you that was exactly the same place that God Almighty in heaven stopped the advancement of the armies of the north under Queen Amena in Zaria almost 300 years ago. Did I not tell you that? I need you to tell me about map. They have not read the LNC, they have not been to any library. They have not done any research. People talk rubbish. They don't know what they are talking about. They don't know what Biafra means. They don't know how deep Biafra is in the spiritual realm. They have no idea. That is why Facebook is mad now. <laughs> they are crazy. <laughs> but I must preach the gospel of heaven. Elohim gave me a mandate to preach. And that is exactly what I'm doing. A message from heaven to the living. Indisputable. Geography. History. Politics. Government all weaved into one. Religion as well. That it. Kogiste to Benue from where I told you Igala land, Idoma land is Biafra. Even according to the Portuguese. They called it Biafra, yes. And we are subject of the king of the Mandingos. They were very black and many were naked and others wore cotton cloth. Hey! Oh my goodness, they even bought some slaves from there. Why Elohim is angry with us? Now it is why a lot of people claim that Biafra is Portuguese name because this Portuguese writer Duarte wrote about it that when they came, they couldn't pronounce our name properly, which was Biafra. Afara, my village. They named it Biafras. <laughs> so the land from Kogi down to the Atlantic is Biafra. The water roads that the island at the mouth of this bay, being the bio, the bite of which is Bonnie, and the mainland. Now listen very carefully. They have five. He described everything. He described this is Portuguese, so Portuguese described everything. You know what they said? The water said he said the inhabitants of this land are evil. IGBO. Not Niger Delta. Not even a jaw. Because a jaw is a subgroup of Igbo. If they make noise, I will, I will, I will prove it to them. That we are all one people. Everybody came from Igbo. The Portuguese wrote that they are all Igbo people. And uh, that Buta is the language of the Bantu tribe of Cameroon, of course. It is a mix. I will get into that later on. <laughs> It is worth knowing that the Portuguese came looking for the Garden of Eden. I've not, I don't want to say this on air before they stop giving us, before they say that Biafra will not come. But let me put it to you this way. 
the white man saw something. That was why. One day I will tell you why they used Enugu as the capital of their administration in the East. Garden of Eden. One day I will teach you that why Enugu was chosen. <laughs> hey, Elibwe. The white man came looking for the Garden of Eden because they were told that the Garden of Eden is at the center of the world. And the center of the world is Biafra. And they came looking for it. That is why they don't want Biafra to develop. And that is why the British thinks that any day Biafra comes, that the Messiah will come. That is their fear. If you don't know, let me tell you. So when Satan goes into a Yoruba man or a Fulani man and saying walk against, anybody walking against Biafra is walking for the devil. I can tell you that. It's making me to become a bit um, emotional. I don't want to go... There are some things about Biafra that mortal, mere mortals don't know. Unless you are in the realm, you, can, you, can, you can't see it. You're blind. It is there in all their papers. The white European, they know. They said the God of Eden is in Biafra land. And the British are afraid. If you give them freedom, that the world will come to an end. That was why I said that Biafra is the last miracle on this very earth. If you know what we encounter on a daily basis, you'll be shocked. You will be. In the reign of Elizabeth I, 1597, her ships came to West Africa. That was how the Portuguese <laughs> and the president they called it Biafraes. But I'm going to shock you this night from encyclopedia.com. Go to encyclopedia.com. And in encyclopedia.com, you enter Royal Niger Company. I want to tell you something. Because when Royal Niger Company came, the British decided to divide us and started to call us funny names like Niger Delta. That was how it came about. If you don't know, because the British were afraid of the word Biafra. The Biafra, when they hear it, it reminds them of the glory and the might of black people. It reminded the British of the promise that God made to black people. And the only way to keep black people down all over the world is to keep Biafra down. And that is a fact of life. That is something that we know. That is something that the whole world knows. And that is something that they are trying to keep away from you. That even when the British came with the Royal Niger Company or whatever it is. Now listen very carefully. I want to educate our people. The Royal Niger Company came. They combined their functions. All the, This is from English Encyclopedia. Please. I want to read this thing for you. East trading prowess opened up the territories of several communities and nations with which European trade had previously been only indirect. They mentioned the Urobos, Ukwane, which is Igbo, of course, Ibibio, and Igbo in Niger Delta. You want me to repeat that? This is the British. <laughs> hey, China can never remember. Is the pig listening? All your upper lower, lower upper Niger. Now, are you listening to what I'm preaching this night? I will read it again. Urobo, Ukwane, Ibibio, and Ibo in Niger Delta. I think on that note, I bring this program to a close. I bring it to a close because we have preached this very gospel this evening. And Elohim is with us. Let no idiot come and tell you rubbish about Biafra. I will publish the maps very soon, if not tonight, tomorrow morning. All the maps we have, Biafra, as the names are changing. And let me tell you why I would bring, or Elohim, Elohim will bring Biafra in my time. Do you know why? Now, I want you to go to sleep with this. Our name is Biafra, which is B-I-A-F-A-R-A. -A -A, my name of my village. If you take away B-I, which is the calling, you have Afara left, which is where I come from. And that is not a Portuguese name. It's a Biafran name. Afara. 
Afra means come and join. That's the meaning of it. So, Biafara means simply come and join. Are you listening? I'll publish the map. So, our names have gone from Biafra, which signifies our trip from the Afar region of Ethiopia, which is where you, why we have light-skinned people in Biafra land and no other place in the coast of West Africa. They're all black as charcoal. Only Biafrans are light. Only a Biafra woman can give birth to somebody who is white, almost white. That's why we are light-skinned. The Fulanis got their light skin by, you know, in those days, prostituting themselves to the Moors, to the Arabs. That's how they, it's a mongrel race, if you don't know. We got ours on our sojourn through Ethiopia. And our name followed us, Biafra, B-I-A-F-R-A. -A -A. And you know the funniest thing? This Afar region of Ethiopia has been taken over by Islam. Isn't it funny that Islam is now coming to also take over the land of Biafra? Isn't it funny? Very strange. Our name changed from Biafra to Biafraes, which was a corrupt version of Biafara. Afara is where we are come from. And you know how I know that that is correct? Because that was where Biafra ended. Temporarily, that is. The last headquarters from where Ojupu took off to every coast is in my village. In my compound. It's called Opola Isiopwe. Where you have Ojuku Bunker that BBC went to. Opola Isiopwe means the very beginning of the people. Opola means the very first place of that people. That was the last headquarters of Biafra, and from there, Biafra will rise once again. I thank you very much for listening. As always, we have demonstrated without any shred of doubt that Biafra is our religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship. Because Elohim, Chuko Kikabe is our God. I thank you very much for listening and from me, from here, it is good evening.